Hey everyone, so the Oxford term is officially over and that means that most of us have gone back home to recover for a good six weeks which means sleeping for a week and then probably working for a few weeks after that. Um, I got back home today and whilst most of us are relaxing for a bit that means that the interviews are coming up. So I believe interviews start on Monday which will be tomorrow and they will continue for about two or so weeks. Um, in particular, the medicine interviews will happen on a three-day period between Sunday the 11th and Tuesday the 13th of December. I was in this position last year, so I get that interviews can be quite a stressful experience and there aren't very many resources telling you what to expect um, during interviews. So I figured I'd make this video to tell you a bit of information about what to expect. Um, I'll talk a bit about my experience and I will give a bit of advice about how to prepare and how to feel comfortable. It will be mainly focused on medical interviews at Oxford, but I'm sure lots of the advice will be able to be applicable to other courses. So for medicine, the interview period is three days, and for different subjects this will vary a lot. But um, for each medical applicant, you'll have two days, so you'll either stay on the Sunday and Monday, or the Monday and Tuesday. And you'll get four interviews, um, two at two different colleges. So when you apply to Oxford, you will have applied to either a specific college, or you have submitted an open application. Um, if you've submitted an open application, you'll be randomly allocated to a certain college. In addition to your specific college or your randomly allocated college, you'll also get another um, interview at another college. So overall, you'll be seen by two different colleges and at each college, you'll have two interviews. One interview will be more scientific and one interview will be more clinical. So the Oxbridge interview medicine is quite different to other interviews at other medical schools so most other medical schools will either opt for a panel interview or an MMI interview. Uh, panel interviews are where you'll be interviewed by three four or five interviewers and you'll speak for maybe 20 minutes or half an hour whereas MMI interviews are where you'll speak usually one-on-one -on -one, uh, for five minutes with a different interviewer at each stage so you'll have maybe 10 or um, so stations and then you will rotate through the stations and at each station you'll be tested for a different skill or quality or just a different part of the application. At Oxford, however, the interviews are far more academic and you'll usually speak um, for about 20 minutes at each interview with two or three interviewers and the interviews are far more of a discussion than a question and answer session. So you'll speak about one thing and you'll continue to speak on that topic for quite a while and it's just more of a conversation. So the interview is meant to replicate a tutorial and often the interviewers are tutors. Um, so they want to see if they can work with you for the next few years and if they can have good discussions with you about um, your course. It's quite difficult to generalise and say that in the scientific interview this will happen and in the clinical interview this will happen because it does vary a lot from college to college and even from interview to interview. But overall they're not only scientific or only clinical because elements of the two will overlap. So often in the scientific interview you can start speaking about um, a scientific concept but then go on to apply that to um, a clinical concept and then see how the two link. So for example in my scientific interview I was asked to speak about a scientific topic um, which I was interested in. So I spoke about CRISPR-Cas9 which is a gene editing technique. So we spoke about genetic engineering on a molecular level and then we went on to apply that to clinical um, situations and how that could be applied to different disorders. And that just goes to show that um, it's not just going to be scientific. Clinical um, elements will come into the scientific interview because the two are very closely interlinked. I was also given some graphs to look at. So I was asked to describe the trends shown in the graphs and to explain why there were certain um, fluctuations or why certain things happened in the graphs and then from there we went on to discuss um, what was shown in the graphs and went on to apply that again to clinical situations. So you can never fully prepare for the scientific interview because you have no idea what you could be asked about but it's always good to have a good grounding of your um, A-level science knowledge because you probably will be asked extensions of that so it won't ask you what um, respiration is for example but they will apply that to different situations and you could use um, your knowledge from there to then apply that and say 
well, I know that this happens in this way, so perhaps that could be used in this situation. More than anything else, they're testing how you think. So they want to see how you cope when you're challenged and how you deal with new information. Um, they don't really care about what you know because anyone can memorise something and then regurgitate it later. They want to see how you think, how you deal with problems and how you work through it. So the most important thing is to think out loud and just to stay calm enough to be able to um, think through something because... Sometimes the answer isn't very clear and often you won't know the answer because there's no point in them testing you on something that you already know. Um, so if you think out loud, they can see where you're going with something. They can see your train of thought and they can sort of lead you towards the right answer. And that's um, how you can discuss things because you will get things wrong. I got many things wrong and I said some really stupid things, but because I was able to um, verbalise my thoughts, they um, helped me through it and then we got through the interview. So I'll talk about a very silly mistake I made um, because I just really do want to show that you can say some really, really stupid things and still get in. So at one point we were talking about antibiotics and they asked me what the first antibiotic discovered was and I said penicillin. I was like, yes, I read about this. I know all about it. And then they asked me how it was discovered. And then I was like, oh, I know where it was discovered, but I don't know how. So I said, okay, I'm not too sure. I had no idea whatsoever. I completely blanked out. I said, I'm not too sure. But for some reason, I want to say it was discovered in a cow's stomach. Don't ask me how I thought that. Don't ask me why I thought that. I just, in the moment, it sounded somewhat okay to say. So they laughed at me, um, understandably so because <laughs> there's no reason why penicillin would be discovered in a cow's stomach. There was no logical explanation for that. But um, yeah, that was a really stupid thing I said. And then we worked through it afterwards and we spoke about it and we discussed it further and how it could be um, applied to um, different bacterial infections. And that was absolutely fine. And lots of my friends also made some really stupid mistakes as well. And that's absolutely okay. You just have to laugh at yourself and understand that you won't always get the right answer. You will make some stupid mistakes, but that's absolutely okay. Because you're a 17 or 18 or 19 year old and you're not expected to know everything. As for the clinical interview, there's often at least one clinician there. And in this interview, they want to see if you have um, the skills and the aptitude to become a good doctor. Because presumably you will want to... Most of you will want to become doctors at the end. So in my scientific interview, they did ask um, a little bit about my personal statement, but I was definitely asked more about it in um, my clinical interview. So we spoke a bit about my work experience and what I had witnessed there. We also spoke about um, some of the skills required to be a doctor, and we discussed different um, aspects of uh, patient care. In one of my clinical interviews, I was also given an article to read, so I think it was a recent um, news article from The Guardian and I was given uh, around 20 minutes to half an hour before the interview to read through it and make notes and then we discussed it in the interview. Again, it was more of a discussion. So we spoke about several different ethical principles as well as global health and different uh, pandemics, for example. So for the clinical interview, definitely recommend that you are up to scratch with your ethical knowledge. Uh, make sure you know how medical ethics works, at least um, knowing the four principles of ethics. And also know a bit about the NHS and the structure of the NHS and how um, patient care is delivered. Um, it's also useful to know a bit about global health um, and different pandemics, for example, which may be happening or epidemics even. But even so, that's all background knowledge. So you're never really expected to know anything. It's more about how you think about things. So will you be able to critically think about something? Will you be able to analyse something? Will you be able to think about things from more than one perspective? Can you think outside the box? So with the Oxford interview, there's only so much preparation you can do because it's an interview It's an interview to test how you think and not what you know. So make sure, first of all, that you know your personal statement inside out. Make sure you know um, exactly what you've written and that you've read a bit more about it. And if you have said, for example, that you have read a book, 
make sure you have read the book and that you know it fairly well because I have heard of situations where someone has, has said that they've read a book which they haven't and the interviewer is the person who wrote the book and you really don't want to be in that situation. And just overall make sure you know your personal statement really well. So as an example I wrote in my personal statement that I did work experience in the renal and transplant department of um, a local hospital. So following that, I was really interested in the preparation for surgery. So I read a book um, about um, the preparation for surgery called The Checklist Manifesto, which was a really interesting book. It spoke about um, how they came up with the checklist, um, which is used uh, before and after surgery. And I thought that point was about the book. I thought that point was about the checklist. But um, the interviewers picked up on the word renal because it was in the renal department. And they asked me about how the kidney worked. And I was a little bit thrown because I wasn't expecting to be asked about that part of um, that point. But um, that just goes to show that you really do need to know your whole, per your whole personal statement really well. Make sure you know your A-level science content quite well and make sure you've read around your course. Um, that will help you quite a bit in um, the interview. But again, it will only be to an extent because it's an interview to test how you think and not uh, what you know. Whilst you're there, as difficult as this may sound, try to um, enjoy yourself. So don't stay locked up in your room. Um, go socialise, meet new people and look around Oxford because it really is a beautiful place. And you don't often get to be in Oxford without having the stress of deadlines and um, all the other academic pressures. So it's nice to just um, walk around and be a bit of a tourist. If you need to pause during your interview to think about something, that's absolutely fine. In your head it will feel like you've stopped speaking for days, but it will only be a couple seconds and the interviewers probably won't even notice. Um, don't just jump to say the first thing that comes to mind. Think about it for a second, but then do um, think about it out loud once you think that you've started to think of something. Remember, it's absolutely okay to get things wrong. As Jessie showed in her video, um, there are lots of mishaps which happen in interviews. And as I demonstrated with my uh, penicillin in the cow's stomach, you can say lots of stupid things and still get there in the end. And that's absolutely okay. It's also absolutely fine if some of your interviews don't go very well. Um, I felt that both of my interviews at one of my colleges didn't go very well at all and that the others um, I enjoyed much more. And I'm still at Oxford and it's okay for some of them not to go too well. If you go out of an interview feeling that you enjoyed it, that's probably a really good sign. Um, if you leave an interview feeling that you had fun, um, it probably demonstrates that you will enjoy the tutorial system. Having said that, if you leave and you feel a bit stressed out, that's absolutely fine as well. If you have an interview at Oxford that is excellent, you should really be proud of yourself because it means that you are very academically strong. So even if the interviews don't go too well or you don't make it past the interview stage, don't be too disheartened because you will probably flourish wherever you go. Um, particularly for medicine, which is a course which doesn't really, um, it doesn't really matter where you go for university, you'll still get an excellent education anywhere. And remember that you're going to be speaking to some um, world leading experts in your field. You're going to have discussions with some people who know more than anyone else in the world about what they're talking about. And that is a really fun and really humbling experience. Um, really do make the most of that because it's a really rare opportunity that not many people get. So do try to enjoy yourself. I wish you all the best and if you have any questions please do um, put them in the comments below or send me a message. I'll be happy to help um, with anything. And that is my last video for term. I'll see you guys in Hillary term.